Hello everyone, welcome to my talk. This is Charlie Su, CTO and President of Endis Technology. I'm also in the RISC-V Technical Steering Committee. Today I'd like to talk about our powerful solution for Data Center Accelerator and its roadmap. First, let me do a quick introduction for Endis Technology for those who don't know us. Endis is a 16 years old pure play CPU IP public company with headquarters in Xinjiang, Taiwan and offices worldwide. We are a RISC-V founding and premium member. We are very active in RISC-V International, in the board and TSC, as RISC-V ambassador, and as chair and co-chair for couple TSTG, including P-Extension and TIOPMP and Fast Interrupt. We are also a major open source contributor and maintainer. Among the quick facts to update, our customer had a record year in 2021. The total shipment of Andy's embedded SOC is now close to 10 billion. Andy's has been driving risc uh, adoptions from mobile, IoT, automotive to data center. And in the mobile space, usually one or two of our cores are used for control and running protocol stack. In IoT and automotive, our codes are used for application control as well as an efficient compute acceleration through DSP extensions. And in storage and 5G, many instances of our efficient scalar codes are used to process uh, multiple channels in their respective applications. And in data center space, many instances of our vector processors are used to accelerate and then inference and other computation in large SOCs. Our process IP and this core has three major series, 25, 27, and 45 currently. Uh, this figure shows the key features such as vector, DSP, multiple superscaler, L2 cache, memory boost, and Linux, supported by various cores, and their relative position in control pass performance and data pass performance. Or so called compute performance. And our core support branch prediction, caches, local memory, hardware misaligned access, and Andis custom extension. Even though Andis usually isn't the first company to release a certain product category, as our focus is on customer time to market by emphasizing on our product quality, but we still manage to be the first company to release RISC V DSP capable cores and the Vector IP, uh, both are among our popular cores used by our customers. And we are also working on full SAR support with a leading certification company. Next, let's look at a scalable architecture for data center accelerator. That's the uh, focus of this talk. Uh, it's a, a cluster-based architecture. And at the top level, there are multiple clusters and the control processor sharing a global memory. And control processor runs OS application and also control the cluster operation by feeding the command and data and get the results back. And each cluster has a cluster memory shared by multiple PEs. And the interconnect uh, between them is a denied choice by customers. The PE almost always contains a hardware engine to accelerate the most critical and structural uh, functions, which can be used uh, based on um, digital hardware, analog circuit, or even photonics. And, uh, but and there must be a processor with powerful compute capability to take care of the risk computation in programmable ways. So in RISC-V, a vector processor is the best choice. Uh, it should also have an uh, extensible interface to tightly integrate it with the hardware engine and high bandwidth memory subsystem to provide efficient communication with other PEs. And the SOC architecture allows design team to decide a control processor separately from the compute processor. In our case, uh, NDIS NX27V vector process IP has been adopted in about 10 custom projects as compute processors. It has an efficient short scalar pipeline a high bandwidth memory subsystem to feed the vector unit and a powerful uh, vector unit with multiple parallel functional units going on. 
so uh, even NX27 V is a single issue machine, it can produce the results of up to four VLAN every cycle. NX27 V is configurable with various VLAN and SIMD width or DLAN. Uh, the following table shows the performance scaling based on different configuration and the benchmarks from simple compute kernel to CNN functions and the whole mobile net. By increasing VLAN from 256 to 512, one can get 17% higher performance at the 256 SIMD width. By increasing the SIMD width further to 512, it leads to another about 50% performance gains. So this is by no means a conclusion as the performance depends greatly on the code, but it serves as a reference. To integrate the hardware engine and compute processor into a building block, or PE, uh, and this custom extension is very useful. So ACE is a framework to automate the creation of new instruction with custom register, custom memory, and custom ports. It generates RTL, simulator, and toolchain based on user script description. And among all its advantages, ACE can be used to design a new computation instruction and enable a tight coupling with the hardware engine. So in the case of NX27V, the tight coupling can go through a high bandwidth command and data interface called streaming port. So for control processor, NDIS X27L2 and X45MP have been used depending on different requirements from customers. One is single issue and the other is dual issue with up to four cores. And both support Linux um, virtual memory at up to SV48 and optional L2 caches. They can run up to 2 GHz or higher. Compared uh, with uh, X27L2, a 45MP has about 60% higher core mark and over 20% higher spec in 2006 and 40% higher memory bandwidth measured by tiny memory bench. On top of NDIS vector processor, NDIS also builds software stack for AI support. And we offer compute library and NA library optimized for vector instruction. We have LLVM compiler supporting vector intrinsic and auto vectorization and OpenCL compiler for heterogeneous parallel programming. So they provide interface to take the model compiled by N inference engine and run on the target hardware. So we have quite a few partners in each uh, important area of the top level, from the application to the pre-processing, post-processing, to model optimization and inference engines. We also cooperate with partners on the processor, compiler, and optimized uh, libraries. And it is also working on TBM inference engine. There is a talk tomorrow by our member regarding TBM auto scheduler. Will come to attend if you are interested. So what's next? Why use cases and data volume from the edge to the cloud continue to grow rapidly, predicted to hit 90 zettabytes by 2025? We are upgrading our solutions in a couple of directions to address this. First is to provide faster processing or large data array by increasing VLAN and SIMD width. This isn't just to scale the design logically, but the physical design aspects must be taken into account. Second is to allow customers to design new vector instruction to speed up their application-specific computation even more efficiently. Then we also need to have, uh, provide more flexibility in the PE construction, such as multiple vector processor can share a hardware engine and to maintain the different balanced performance and high utilization for a customer's workload. And next is to accelerate scalar dominated loops by providing higher performance scalar unit in the vector processor. Last, we also need a matching a multi core uh, control processor with higher performance, especially in the memory subsystem, to work with a growing powerful P array, such as configuring the P array dispatch task controlling their execution and get the results back. So in the data center space, Andy's focus is to continue to provide highest compute capability in a given die area and power budget. 
So with this, I conclude my talk and thanks for your attention.